I feel like I'm really starting to come into character. Right. Is it cool if I just start from the beginning? Yeah, please remain seated with your seatbelt fastened. Hey, I'm Peter from Super Pacific, and I thought I'd walk through some of the thinking and how we uh, approach designing the X1. When we were designing the canopy, we were thinking of it as a commercial grade canopy for your truck bed, and, and even though most canopies are made of fiberglass or, or you know, welded aluminum frames, we wanted to approach it differently because we thought this particular use case was gonna probably be exposed to more vibration and flex than maybe most canopies. We also wanted to really try to leverage a strong strength to weight ratio. And so we drew on some manufacturing techniques from aerospace and decided to use solid body rivets to uh, assemble the parts that build the fuselage. By doing that, because all of the structural connections are done cold as opposed to a weld, which introduces a lot of heat to a concentrated area, it leaves the temper of the aluminum unaffected and that allows the stresses to be distributed evenly across the whole material, which avoids any sort of concentration of stresses which can cause failure. So that was kind of what drove our design philosophy as we got this thing off the ground. We use a combination of button head rivets in some locations and then countersunk rivets in others. And then out here on the exterior, we're using a countersunk blind rivet uh, that's specific for aerospace. So it, it's it'll handle the vibrations just like the solid body rivets do. The only exception to that is in the corners of the doors. These are the only welds in the whole camper and they're not in a structural location. And we went that way just because it's the easiest way to just get a watertight seal there. We started out with the plan to add these facets, these breaks along the edges of the door. Instead of just being a flat sheet, which is gonna have a lot of flex in it, they give it a lot more structure, a lot more rigidity. The other part of it is that it just looks cool. So we kind of edited the design of it to, to meet our aesthetic vision. I wanted it to be operable with one handle, so you can just pop it and have something in your other hand or whatever. And then once we had created this dimension in the door, we decided we needed to do something to route the cables because all our handles are driven by cable. So we designed these little brackets and looked at them as a way of storing gear, organizing your stuff in that volume that is created by the dimensions of the door. And they're really satisfying to close. It just feels right. When we were designing the fuselage itself, we were really thinking of it as a commercial grade canopy and a huge design criterion that we were working around was keeping full opening at the sides of your truck bed. So we designed all the strength into the fuselage and avoided having to do any kind of braces that would kind of choke out your pass through. Being in the Northwest, we were thinking a lot about water flow and camping in the rain. And um, as we were looking at these big old openings, we thought we ought to add a, a provision to make sure water didn't just flow down into them. So we added this gunnel. It diverts your water coming off the back of the door down and around so it exits to the sides of the opening and not, um, not just into it. And then all of our hardware uh, we designed. It's, it's all machined from you know, billet aluminum. And then we work with a local anodizer to use a uh, UV stable anodizing. We designed the bottom assembly for the latch and the top assembly to kind of work together, create a pass through so you can lock it. This is a little lash point, a little handle to grab when you're getting up on the tailgate. As we were designing them, we really tried to leverage every opportunity to add a little utility. So there's, there's drains internal to these parts that let any water that might work its way into the clamshell get out. We tried to just route paths out for any water. Up here we added another lash point and handle and in my truck you can kind of reach up and grab it like your little oh shit handle. We added T-slots to the extrusion. We designed our extrusion. Uh, it's squeezed here at a plant that's like five miles down the road. We've got double T-slots here, put awning brackets on it, fishing rod holders, whatever. And then another T-slot here and here, again just for mounting whatever accessories you might want. And there's another T-slot on the bottom, which is a nice one. If you uh, are routing power off the lid down towards the camper, you can grab that T-slot as a channel. We designed the corners so there's sort of an internal structural piece that connects the extrusion, and then hinges and latches are secondary pieces that bolt into it. 
Um, so if there's ever a failure with any of these parts, they can just be unbolted and replaced. We tried to make it very serviceable. Any component fails can be replaced, can be upgraded, that type of thing. All our sheet metal parts are made here locally. The furthest away any of our vendors are is about five miles from our shop. Sheet metal, it's all brake formed and laser cut right here. The extrusion is squeezed probably three miles from the shop. Uh, CNC parts are machined at a couple of shops that are all you know, within a half hour drive. So we've got some really awesome uh, partners we're working with to build these things and keep us, keep us in the parts when we need them and make sure everything's built to spec and dialed in. Just walk through the stations, is that, is that cool? Yeah. So each card is, is kitted for the order, the customer's um, you know, specific truck. And then when the station down here is ready for the next cart, they pull it and they service prep it, countersink it, and then it moves over to our riveting tables. So Sam surface prepped these, uh, these parts. These are all beam components, and he's working on a door over here. He's countersinking those so that our, our countersink rivets come out nice and flush. So this is an example of one of our corners. It's a two-part assembly, interior, exterior. These parts fit together. You can see Scott's over there loading up uh, the rivets. So they'll drop in, countersunk. These two assemblies are ready. They're prepared for riveting. These are the countersink rivets that Scott's working with. So he's loaded these parts up, and then he's gonna go over to the riveter and squeeze these little things. There you go, bud. Don't mess this up, man. Scott's got great hands. I find it strangely satisfying to squish a rivet. Yeah, it, it is. So all our parts, you know, they're designed for CNC tools, but when we receive them, we handle them a lot. So it gives us a really high quality control. There's a human being that touches every part that goes into the camper and make sure they fit together. If they don't fit together right, figure out why. Either adjust the file to eliminate the problem or tune it up kind of as needed. So Scott is over here, he's assembling components and Max here is starting to take those assembled components and put the fuselage together. So he's got his posts and his beams all assembled. So yeah, here we've got uh, all of our countersunk rivets here. We countersink these so the skins can lay up on them. Um, the ne kind of next step in the assembly is applying the skins. Those are taped and then riveted down. And then at the box beings where we don't need to countersink them, we leave the button heads. These little knockouts let the riveter get in there and squeeze the rivet. Then they shave a little bit of weight, but mostly they just give us access to where we need it. Then Max is setting up to put the brace in the inside corner. It kind of ties the whole thing together and knocks out any, any uh, looseness in the assembly. So these campers are, have now come off the line and they've got their skins glued to them. We use a VHB tape that can survive powder coat and then we put these rivets through the tape to get a really bomber locked up seam. And this whole unit goes through powder coat. That's how it happens.